hey tribe welcome back to my channel i know it has been a minute since i have uploaded but good things come to those who wait um today i will basically be sharing my testimony of basically me straying away from jesus christ and um how i found my way back so let's start from the beginning i was born in brooklyn new york um from two immigrant trinidadian parents and um i was pretty much a love child my mother's name is alicia my philip my father's name is philip and that's how they kept my name felicia and um but their love quickly burned out once i was born they broke up uh, my dad was a narcissist um he was also a womanizer he was just um all about himself I mean my mom was also all about herself too in her own right um, she's 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 a little bit of a narcissist as well I love I love her but she really is all about herself too um, and so that was pretty much like the environment that I was created in I was surrounded by a lot of um, love I was raised in a household God friend household with my grandmother cousins um, my my grandmother's house was like basically like immigration station so anyone who was coming from trinidad to america they would end up staying at my um grandmother's house until they can get up on their feet and find make their own way so i was the youngest in my house for seven years before my brother was born so i was very very spoiled very very much so i thoroughly enjoy it no shortage of self-esteem over here okay um when i was young i did everything that i wanted to do because um my dad at the time was making lots of money and um so like i was able to you know i went to private school where my private school had ballet and and it was just like you know i i, I learned words like intellectual by the age i was like five so I, I, I was very privileged and thankful for that. Grew up in a church, was ba not baptized, I was christened. And um, I remember going to Bible study as a young child and I loved it. Um, and then I remember I slept over by a family friend's house. I wasn't allowed to sleep over by other people's house, but I was allowed to sleep over by them because my mom trusted them um, and I was molested. Then I didn't know it was molestation because um, I've always thought that molestation happens when an adult touches a child. But um, if a child touches another child, you know, it's considered molestation. I didn't know that. And it happened while I was asleep. She came into my room. She touched me. Um, I felt shame. I felt fear. But then I also liked it so that was now how i was introduced to the spirit of perversion and um then i repeated what was done to me um to two other people in my family and i was um, my conscience thank god that he created that um it didn't sit right with me so i stopped but i still had this spirit of perversion in me so i would literally be i'm like six or seven i'm like humping my toys like dry humping my toys, dry humping the side of the bed, um, making my my dolls like have sex with each other because I'm a little I'm a little girl like I'm my innocence was somehow like stolen from me like I liked it but I feared it but I was also curious it was just it was just very conflicting as a child I never told anyone about it. And then I remember it, I got touched again. This time it was someone who was older than me. Um, he was like 15 or something like that. And I was like maybe like eight or nine. I was sitting on the couch in the style, my legs crossed, and he slipped his hand from behind me down into my underwear. And I just remember feeling shame. I remember feeling shame because I liked it, but then also being scared because I didn't know this person and it was just like it was just like a mixture of feeling of confusion i just did not understand why this kept happening to me and um and i also know like growing up like i was always thick and so like i remember my mom used to always put me in oversized clothing so i kind of felt like shame about my body because i was like 
told to kind of hide my body to like cover up and stuff like that and i noticed that other girls that didn't have the same body type didn't really have to dress in the baggy clothes like i was dressing in the baggy clothes i just really didn't understand so i've always kind of had like this shame for my body like growing up being told i was too fast and i'm literally like not doing anything but just existing um by older women and yeah so my brother was born um my mom and i didn't have the best relationship it went from me being like praised and you know like getting all the attention to my mom saying okay like it's not your t it's you know it's his turn it's like your turn is over type thing like she's done with me in a way it was just very traumatic in a way for me um especially since like she had married my um my brother's dad at the time stepdad and at this time my dad had moved on and had married my um stepmom at the time and they had like their ideal like happy family and my mom was trying to create this happy family with my brother's dad and so i just really kind of felt abandoned in a way i just kind of felt like i didn't really matter um so i i i thankfully had dance as an outlet that i would be able to like pour my energy into that and i had friends i would pour my energy into that and i had my grandmother my grandmother is my everything and she pretty much raised me um because my mom was going to college when i was um a child and she was doing her own thing so my grandmother pretty much raised me my mom had me young so she had me out of um kind of like it, she didn't have a choice it was not like she chose to have a child you know it wasn't intentional she was just like okay damn like i'm kind of stuck with this child so now i gotta raise this child type thing and so i always kind of felt like a burden you know i kind of felt like i was kind of like getting in the way you know i a lot of people who had um whose parents had them young can kind of relate to what i'm saying but um so anyways now um still living in new york and um now like the internet is like starting to be popping and stuff like that and um then i was on aol chat and i would talk to guys i'm thinking it's my age they were probably pedophiles and like so i had like my first like internet boyfriend but then also in these aol chats like they would have like these pop-ups for like you know to see sexual things basically soliciting porn and that was how i was introduced to porn um so i was just kind of like when i saw these things i was like at the time it was just pictures and i'm so curious i'm so like oh wow like that's what they're doing out here like oh this not what it is it's in and i'm these the feeling of like you know that i i felt like when i was young when i was touched and now that i'm seeing the acts i was just like very curious about it and i was more so leaning towards lesbian porn i didn't really care much for like the penetration and stuff like that um so now this is like when i was 13 i remember because my my email address was girly teen queen 13 okay so that's what i was using um to get into these like chats and stuff like that and um from there this opened up the door the door so i was on this app called this website called sconex and then there was myspace and then ever since that just opened up the doors to like social media and i just fell in love with social media because i was i wasn't getting the love that i desired at home so i kind of sought out in the world the love that i desired and at this time i wasn't really i was going to church but i was going to church because i had to not because i wanted to I, there would be times where i would try to pretend to be sick so i wouldn't go to church like i just i just really did not care much to go to church as much as i did when i was a little girl now like i'm introduced to porn and i'm like sneaking and i'm watching porn and i'm trying to like erase my history this is like me 13 years old like dabbling and that kind of like started my addiction to pornography and um because i was afraid to have sex because at this time now i'm a i'm 13 i'm a teenager my dad is like drilling into my head that all men want to do is have sex with you because he's seeing my body developing he's projecting onto me because he was a hoe his whole life so he's like all these men are going to do is use you that's all they want to do is use you which is ironic because all my dad did was use me 
So anytime that I would spend time with my dad, it, I would be working for him. Me and my sister, we would be passing out flyers. And that was us spending time with our father is basically child labor, us working for this man. So for me, and then um, I, I equated that to, okay, as long as I'm being useful, as long as I'm being used, my dad will love me. So that kind of carried on to how I viewed men in relationships. As long as I'm being used, they would love me. They would appreciate me, you know? So um, so that was pretty much like my father and I's relationship. And that kind of opened up the doors for me to become an entrepreneur because like seeing him hustle and stuff like that was just like, yo, he's like, I don't want to work for the man. Like that's, that's not the goal. Like you want to work for yourself. You want to be this and this and that. So that part I took from him in regards to like entrepreneurship and so now like I'm 14 years old I got my first kiss and that was it it didn't go further than that because like I'm secretly watching porn so that is like my my whole thing is like okay if I watch this this I'll watch this and then I won't have sex so that I don't have sex you know I'll just masturbate and please myself so now like um, I'm 14 years old. We moved from New York to Texas and like, it was like a culture shock to me. Like everything was like high school musical. I had never seen a school so big in my life with like two football fields, two soccer fields, a tennis court, a pool. I was just like, this is, this actually exists. Like the schools in New York look like prisons. So I was just like, this is crazy. And then the first thing my grandmother did when we moved was find us a church home. So found us a church home. Of course, our church was huge. Um, I got to see my church transform into a mega church. And that was one of the things that pushed me away from the church because it started to look more like a business. It started to operate more like a business and it, it became very money hungry. That really turned me off along with the scandals that was going on within the church, within the pastor. Y'all know these black churches, they always got some type of scandal. Like, anyways, so now I'm in this youth church. I'm loving it. Like, I'm like, yo, this is amazing. My pastor has a helicopter. He's flying from here and there to go to church, to all his other churches. And I was kind of skeptical about that. So because of that, I decided to stop tithing. Because I was like, I don't know where my money's going. Mind you, I'm like 14, 15 years old thinking like this. I'm like, I don't know where my money's going. And I was like, do you not know how much jet fuel costs? Like, that's expensive. And and I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to just keep my, my um, Tide money and, and use that for my lunch money when I go to school, right? So, um, so now I'm like in church, loving it every single Sunday. Didn't miss a Sunday. Didn't miss a Bible study Tuesday. Every Friday I was there. I became part of the decision time counseling, helping you know, people dedicate their life to Christ. I was in, um, I was in the praise dance team. And while I'm doing this, like, I'm, I'm just like obsessed. Like I just love being in ministry so much. Okay. So I got my first boyfriend, my sophomore year. And, um, I'm thinking, oh, I really love him and all this stuff like that. And I'm thinking in order for me to really be with this man and for him to love me and to stay with me that I had to have sex with him so we had sex I cried the whole entire time the first time I cried because I kept thinking in my head I heard my daddy's voice all these men want from you is sex that's all they want to do is use you and so I'm pushing through that and I'm just like I'm just gonna do it because I just felt like I, I felt like I had to do it and so I did and we stayed together for a, for a little bit and then he ended up moving and I started dating guys in the school talking to guys in school but like anytime like I would kiss a guy or do something because like in my school I was kind of popular they would like run and tell everybody like it was just like oh yeah I got New York like that was my name because I was from New York so I came there I had the New York accent everything like I moved to Cyprus which is like the suburbs the country is like part that you can kind of live in in Houston the outskirts of Houston so I was kind of like this kind of like exotic like ooh, I've never seen a girl from New York before like all this other stuff so then I was like okay I'm not talking to any dudes from my school because I see how they move in if you hear if you hear my um 
my child crying he's putting himself down for a nap so he's really acting up right now so okay so now i had my first boyfriend when i was 16 i didn't get my second boyfriend until i was 18 and this time i met him in church because i was like ain't no way i'm dating anybody from my school ever again okay um, and then I also noticed anytime that I would date a boy from school, like I would always be interested in the guy that nobody was interested in. And then as soon as I take interest in them, all of a sudden, everybody want him. So I'm just like, I'm not dating anybody from my school. So I found this guy from my church. He was singing in the choir. Um, and he was older than me, I think by two years, like he was 20 something, like he was already in college and I'm a senior um and he could sing his butt off like that boy could sing and i was like okay yeah we started talking so we were in a relationship and we had sex because again i'm thinking i'm supposed to have sex like if i want to keep a man this is what i'm supposed to do right so we have sex and um then there was a rumor that he was cheating I didn't believe it. He goes out, he gets a tattoo of my name on his chest to prove to me that he was serious. I was like, okay. So now um, this girl, she moves into my neighborhood and she's starting her senior year at a new school. So everyone's pretty much all clicked up because we've all known each other since freshman year, right? So, um, so I befriend her because we're riding the bus. We become really close, we become best friends. And so I invite her to my church. And so she's she becomes part of the church and everything like that. Then um, she ends up sleeping with my boyfriend. Yes. Um, and it was just so, so sick how it happened because she got kicked out of her aunt's house. And she moved in with me. I was like, you can stay with me. Um, apparently, while she was staying with me, she was sleeping with my man. So the day that she slept with him, she came back to my house in my bed and wearing my clothes, eating my food. And then she moves out the next day. And then I guess her conscience was so heavy. She calls me and, and confesses everything. Now, I did not believe her. My pride did not let me believe her because this girl was so unattractive. Like she shaved her head Buddhist bald. Okay, like. Britney Spears style. She had acne all over her face and she had piranha teeth and she was overweight. So in my mind, I was just like, why on earth would he sleep with you when he has this? Okay. And that's because he was insecure. Now that I know this man was just insecure. And that's why, that's why you ever thought like when these women who like their men like cheat on them and they're beautiful, they always cheat on someone that's not as beautiful as them. And that's because they just need that type of validation or reassurance that they're that man that they're, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I didn't believe her. We ended up like not talking to each other and all this stuff. Cause of course I'm not going to keep talking to you. Like, but I stayed with him. He denied it ever happened. All of this, whatever the case may be. I'm like, okay, I believe you. So, mind you, we're all going to the same church. So now there's gossip going on. Now she's she's befriending the people who don't like me. You know, misery loves company. And then it's just like gossip and drama. So now I'm like, okay, now the church is involved in our drama. Messy. So then the youth pastors that were supposed to be helping guide the drama basically was part of the drama to gossiping. And that's what led me astray from the church because I'm like, you guys were put here to guide us and to help us and you're literally making it worse. So I literally, at this point, I'm like, I can't trust anybody. I can't trust church. I can't trust females. But for some reason, my ass still stays with this man. Like he was just so good and so charming. And the thing was, it was just like the devil really be in church because this man would go sing his ass off in choir, but then was just really dark outside of church. But now at this point, I completely stopped going to church. I'm getting ready to start college. And um, 
there is a situation where he cheated on me again, but this time I caught him. So I was at home and mind you, let me tell you, this man ended up moving into my grandmother's house next door because he got kicked out of his uncle's house. And then now he got kicked out of his uncle's house. My grandmother was living in New York, working, paying her bills, like sending money to pay her bills in Texas because she couldn't find a job in, in, in um, Houston quite, quite yet. So um, I was like, okay, you can stay at my grandmother's house. My grandmother agree. All you have to do is pay rent. He was renting out a room. So now the night I suspected that he was cheating, I go next door and I knock on the door and some other person, because I see two cars parked on the, um, outside, some other guy opens the door and I'm like, who are you? What are you doing here? I peek in. I see that there's a girl on the floor, like in the living room. And I'm like, who is that? What are y'all doing? He's like holding the door like he wouldn't let me in. And I'm just like, yo, you're not about to stop me from going into my grandmother's house. So then I push him past, I push past him. I go in, I'm knocking on that, on my boyfriend's door. And I'm just like, who, what are you doing in there? Da, 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 da. So now I'm pissed because I know he's in there with a girl. I'm kicking the door with my bare foot and I kick a hole through the door. This man comes out fixing his clothes and then I see the girl that he's in there with was the school hoe and I'm just like yo this man has the audacity to be sleeping with another female next door in my grandmother's house while I'm I'm just like yo this is disgusting I'm pissed I'm screaming I'm punching him I'm hitting him he pushes me outside the house I run next door to my grandmother's house to my to my mom's house I grab a knife I'm trying to slash the tires end up cutting myself there's blood dripping all over the the, the um, driveway the neighbors call the cops because I'm screaming I'm pissed the cops come it's just a mess the next day he was told to move out so he moves out and um and I'm like I'm drinking, I'm drunk, I end up throwing up. Like it was the first time I ever drank alcohols and it's for me to do it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. I didn't drink again until I was 21, like rookie mistake. So now he moves out, while he's moving out, he decides to break into my grandmother's room and steal from her. All within the same time, I find out I'm pregnant by this man, of course. I get an abortion but before I get an abortion I tell my mother I'm getting an abortion this happened she laughs at me and goes upstairs I'm crying so I'm lonely my mother doesn't give a damn about me this man that I was in love with cheated on me in the most vile way and still said my grandmother I I am just like I'm so sad like at this point and I'm just like, well, I have to do this. Like, you know, it's my body. It's my choice. Like, had I known that I was sacrificing to a demon named Moloch, I would have never done it. So I go, I get the abortion. I come back home. I'm in my room. I'm crying for hours. I'm depressed. Mind you, I'm getting ready to start college. This is how, this is how I'm getting ready to start college, right? So then I shake it off try to find some positivity in my life and I just move forward. I, I get a job, I'm working and I'm going to college. While I'm in college, I meet my third boyfriend. This man is a track star, a, an Olympian track star, right? And um, we start dating and everything like that. Um, turns out this man was just a compulsive liar. Like he just lied about everything all the time for no reason. Like I did not understand it. On top of that, he was a mama's boy who had a very toxic, codependent relationship with his mother. His mother treated him like her husband. It was like that type of weird dynamic. No woman was good enough for her son. None. There was a time where he had got put in the hospital because he had blood clots. And she saw me in there and she slapped me in my face because she did not want me there. And I ended up kicking this woman in the stomach and beating the living daylights out of her. Like, I'm like, oh, you want to treat me like I'm some B? Well, I'm going to treat you like you somebody on the street too. Bop, 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 boom. Like, I went off on her because I was already dealing with her throughout the relationship. And at that point, I was like, you can say what you want. But once you put your hands on me, it's over. 
then the security cards get involved. They see, they run the cameras. They see that I was acting in defense or whatever. Me and this man continue a relationship, right? Now there's these rumors about him cheating, just like the last person, because why this man had so many female friends. Just like my ex before, he had so many female friends. He everywhere we go, everywhere we went, he knew some female. And the thing that would bother me, he would never introduce me to them. He would just say hi, talk to them, and I'll just be sitting there quiet, just like, okay, I guess I I don't exist, right? And this person, like, there was a time, and this one made me really leave him and not want to be with him anymore. We went to a party, my phone got stolen. I was distressed about that. Ended up getting a new phone. A few days later, this guy, my boyfriend at the time, shows up with the same exact phone that I had. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, you got a phone? He's like, oh, yeah, I like the phone that you have, so I got one for myself. I said, okay. He went. We had sex. He went He used, He used. went to go use the bathroom. And I something in me, my conscience again, told me to go through his phone, went through his phone, saw his pictures. All of his pictures were all the pictures that I had taken. Why? Because this man had stolen my phone. Why would my boyfriend steal my phone from me? Absolutely no clue. So now I'm like, I can't be with this man. He just lies all the time for nothing. Now he's stealing from me. Can't do it. Broke up with him. He begged and pleaded. He cried all this stuff to try to get back with me. I wasn't trying to do it. Found out I was pregnant again. Now this time I'm devastated because I'm like, I can't tell my mom because she obviously doesn't give a fuck about me. Now this time... In, in my relationship, my mom is counting down the days for me to move out. Like, she cannot wait for me to leave. And I've never, and my mom and I, again, never had a good relationship. She, I used to tell her, like, mom, like, why don't you ever ask about, like, my day? Because I'm watching Disney and all of these shows, how their parents act like they care about their kids so much. And she'll be like, for what, Felicia? You're so annoying. Like, I'm tired. Like, her number one phrase for me was, I'm so annoying. I was always so annoying just trying to talk to you and have a relationship i was just so annoying to her so i didn't have a relationship with my mom um my grandma at this point had moved i had told her what happened she cried she prayed and i was like i was like what can what am, what am i gonna do i i, I like i don't want to have i don't want to at this point like i don't want to go through having an abortion again because the first time when i went let me tell you the quietest room in the world is in an abortion clinic everyone is so so quiet and so it's like you can hear a pin drop in there and it's just like you can all you can hear is your own thoughts and it's just like I remember one the the first time I went there was a lady in there and it was like her fourth or fifth abortion and she was just casually in there just getting an abortion I'm just like yo this is sickening like this is sickening so now I'm stuck with this decision to have a second abortion so I'm like all right I'm gonna talk to him and see if like he'll help me take care of this child of course when I talk to him this man is acting like oh well, they don't got nothing to do with me. Sorry, can't help you. And I'm just like, man, there's no way I'm going to be stuck with this man for the rest of my life again. So I go to the abortion clinic crying the whole way. As And the most cliche thing that day, there was people outside with signs saying, don't kill your baby. Don't do this. And, da -da -da -da. and I'm just like, shame, shame. And I'm like, this, this, why is this happening to me? Like, this is, this is like on this day of all days, this didn't happen the first time, but the second time it happened, I'm in distress. The second time I'm awake for the whole procedure. I feel everything. I'm crying the whole entire time. I'm hearing the vacuum. I'm just like, like, I'm just like, yo, this, I was just so sad. I was so broken. Like, I was just like, I can't believe this is happening to me a whole year later. I'm having another abortion, another sacrifice to Moloch. I didn't know this at the time. And so I'm just like, yo, this is wild. So now I'm like, okay, I'm in this completely dark place in my life. I'm like, nobody gives a fuck about me. Men, all they really want to do is use me. Just like my dad said, um, at this point, me and my dad's relationship is non-existent. 
because every single time at this point because i had moved back to texas and i would go see him in the summers so every time i would go see him in the summer it was like he was trying to cram like a year's worth of parenting on me and it was just so overbearing and he was just so narcissistic and at this point in his life he had found jesus and he had became one of those christians he was holier than everybody he was just obsessed with it and he was just cramming it down everybody's throat and he was just better than everybody and he was always preaching and always and i was just like i am so freaking sick and tired of this sh nonsense and so our relationship was like basically hanging on to a thread and i would always look forward to leaving and in hindsight it's crazy because i always envied my sister thinking she's growing up in like the perfect household like with her mom and her dad and at this time now there's my i had like one two three i had like four siblings and they're all like growing up together in this happy home and i'm over here going back to an environment where seemingly nobody gives a damn about me you know what i'm saying come and find out my sister was actually jealous of the fact that i was going get it, able to leave because the environment that they were in was so toxic because my dad was such a narcissist that him and my stepmom were constantly arguing and a lot of y'all have have y'all ever been in a relationship or seen someone in a relationship that were married and it was like yo please get a divorce for my for my own sanity for my own peace of mind that was the relationship that my dad and my stepmom had but whenever i would come to visit they would put on a show of a perfect home because my dad always envied my mother my dad always envied that she you know went to college and that she you know got a house in texas he was so jealous that she became a homeowner before him while he was struggling because when he was making all the money he spent it recklessly and was never able to make the money that he was making back in the days from when he used to be a dj and he was part of the nightlife like i grew up with um like as a child i grew up in the club like i was always in a club in the nightlife with him because he was a dj he was promoting all these artists like buju bantan all these people so i was heavily into that that from um when i was younger on my dad's side so on my mom's side i was into the christian lifestyle but on my dad's side i was of the world i was out in the clubs as a young child like i was in the club and i was out at night and i was you know really in the streets of new york as a child that was the name of his business streets of new york so now i'm 20 years old at this point i had only had three boyfriends 16 18 and 19 right and um so now i'm like starting to really like go out and really starting to like hang out and do all these things and stuff like that still didn't start drinking it but i had i was introduced to weed and i would like occasionally smoke it like once a month but then i feel so guilty about it. then i wouldn't do it again for like another three months and then i'll hit it again and stuff like that um so now i'm 20 years old and i meet my then i didn't know then but he would be my husband and how i met him you can watch the story on how i met him on my video where it says what i learned in my marriage why i got divorced um so i met him when i was 20. he was 47 like he was approaching 50. what was i thinking i don't know obviously had daddy issues but this person even though he was that he was that old he didn't look that old like he was very well put together he worked out he was in the gym he was one of those like very dapper like gentlemen like you know like he looked good for his age um he had such a high sex drive so at that point before i was watching porn here and there um but when i met him i stopped watching porn completely because his sex drive was so high I would be too drained to do anything else and he taught me how to do things with my body that I didn't know that I can do like I didn't know that I can like squirt and have multiple orgasms and do all of these things like I didn't know my body was capable but like he really would like push my body to the limit um there was times like it was like while we were having sex like he would say something about me being like a sex toy a fuck toy to him and it was just kind of like 
don't ever say that to me again like that's weird you know but i'm young i'm naive i'm thinking that he's just talking you know talking smack while we're having sex and he just crossed the boundary and i set my boundary in it and he never said it again little did i know that this man just had a, a fetish for young black girls he wasn't black he was hispanic but he was white because he wanted to be white. He assumed he wanted to be white so bad. Like he was born in the 70s. So he was born in an era where being a Mexican was looked down upon in, Cal down upon in California. So he wanted to be white, but he hated white people. So he really had this white complex. Anyways, so we ended up, I was with this man from 20 to 27. Now, while I'm, while, while I'm with him, I'm not going to church. I am now like kind of dabbling into spirituality. I'm trying to figure out God. I'm trying to figure out what God is to me now that I feel like the church is corrupt. I feel like even though now I know that it's the people that are corrupt. God isn't corrupt. It's the people that's corrupt. But in that time, I'm thinking the church is corrupt. The people are corrupt. Um, so that means that Christianity is not really for me. And then one thing about the relationship with me, like when I was dating my ex-husband, it was so dark how this man like really made me, <laughs> it's really out here in the street. So um, I had lost my job at Wells Fargo and um, I didn't know what to do. And I went to my boyfriend at the time who, who was, who became my husband. And he, he recommended that I became a stripper because of my body. And I was just like, oh wow. so. I have a man that I'm supposed to be in love with telling me to use my body for other men to make money. Okay. And so I did. I became a stripper. I was stripping for like two months um, until my partner at the time came in and was spying on me. Saw what I was doing, which was normal stripper shit. Dragged me out of the club and was like, I never want you to do this again. Like, you're not going to do this again. Like, I'll take care of you. I don't care. I don't want to see you doing this. And I'm like looking at him like, dude, what, what the hell did you think that I was in here doing? Like reading the Bible. So um, then I remember asking God, I was like, please, God, like, I, I, I really hope there's a breakthrough in something. And um, I ended up getting a, a bank job at Cadence Bank. And then I was working there. And then I was still like doing my City Republic business. And then my City Republic business took off. And um, then I started doing that full time. But now I'm carrying all these demons because when I was a stripper for even though it was a short period of time, I'm having all these men touching on me, grabbing on me. And, and I'm over here like drinking so much liquor, aka I'm drinking all these spirits, you know, to kind of numb myself from having to deal with all of these men on me all the time. And then on top of that, I was seeing so many dark things happening inside of these strip clubs. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to I'm really using my body. I'm really using my body, which is basically prostitution to make money. And um, yeah, that kind of just really just changed my whole perspective on like how I used my body. So now like I'm using my body now on social media, you know, I'm, I'm dressing sexy and I'm like, you know, really like wearing bikinis and all this stuff. Like I'm really, I'm like, hey, like shit, I was using my body in a strip club to make money so now i'm using the body my body for myself to make money and now i'm empowered now it's like women empowerment and everything like that so yeah that was that was definitely um an interesting turn and then even though my husband at the time was the one that recommended me to do stripping i still stayed with him because i saw that he was so he felt so bad for what he had did and i had forgiven him and then um I never had to worry about anything ever again after that. Like he took care of me. Um, I never, anytime we went out, I never had to open up my wallet or anything like that. And so like, I'm just out here, like I'm just gonna be out here and explore. I'm traveling the world. And now that became kind of like my spirituality. Like I'm like, ooh, like on my eat, pray, love. So I'm going everywhere. So my, my ex-husband had introduced me to all these different things. And like, I'm just like, so like, eating all up right i'm just like i'm so excited that i'm really like finally living my best life so now um i'm doing my business full time i'm an entrepreneur full time i'm making all this money and like i'm living this lavish life i'm staying in these these condos with these 
with valet, concierge, where they unload your car and unload your groceries for you. I'm I, like, I was really living the life, okay? Um, so because my husband was very materialistic, and um, so that was pretty much my lifestyle. I was like very much in the world. Um, then now, I was, how old was I? I think I was, I had to have been like, this was like a, the year that I'm getting ready to leave my husband. So I'm like 27 going on 28. And I go to this Solange album release party. And I go and I had the most weirdest experience ever. It was so demonic. And that was the first time that I really was like, what the heck is going on in the music industry? This shit is dark. So when she was doing that, when I was sitting down looking at her visuals, because it was a visual album, I'm with a friend at the time who was a Hebrew Israelite. And she was basically telling me she's oh, she's worshiping Mami Wata and she's worshiping Oshun and she's doing witchcraft and she's doing this. And this is why she's doing that. So she's breaking down the things that I'm seeing. And meanwhile, everybody else in the room is in a trance in a trance and i'm like does anybody else not feel this this is weird so now we leave and i feel like something is following me i feel like something's on me, but there's nothing on me so then i'm talking to her i was just like oh i, I was like can you tell me about your black jesus because at this point like she's a hebrew israelite so she believes that jesus is black which i still to this day i believe that jesus is black too based off of scientific proof and history and geographically everything like the people in the bible were black okay so now I'm like, okay, well, take me to your um, Bible, take me to your Bible study. Like I want to go. So her dad was a, a pastor or something, but they didn't call him pastors. But he was teaching me all about the Bible and teaching me about this. And I'm like soaking it up because I feel something on me. So I'm driving home and I'm constantly looking in my rearview mirror because I'm still feeling something on me. So at this time, I, my husband at the time was out of town. So I went home, I go to sleep and I wake up because I'm having an orgasm. I feel like something is fingering me. So I wake up because I hear myself moaning and I, I'm jumping out of my bed and I'm like, what the hell was that? There's nothing in the room with me. So instantly I started to pray. And at this time I was introduced to Sage. And the reason why I was introduced to Sage was because I had started doing yoga. So I had a friend at the time who was trying to practice to be a, a yogi practitioner or whatever. So she would come over to my house and we would practice yoga every day. And I'm paying her like little donations because she's not a full, you know, uh, she's not a yoga instructor. She's just practicing. So I'm paying her to teach me yoga. I'm doing yoga like it's my religion. So now I'm practicing yoga and little did I know that literally that is a portal for demons because you are literally worshiping different hindu gods these pagan gods aka demons so i'm doing yoga religiously okay? i don't care what any of you guys say it doesn't matter what your intention is okay the intention of yoga is to worship demons okay yoga is a spiritual practice with physical benefits not the other way around so whether you want to believe it or not, you can do all the research you want to. You are tapping into demonic portals. You are literally giving these demons permission to enter your body. Okay. You can stretch regular. You know what I'm saying? No one's saying not to be stretching. No one's saying not to be healthy, but be careful because we be doing things not knowing the root of where these things come from. So now that I know what yoga really is you will never see me go to a yoga class ever again you will never see me doing no asanas and no downward dog or no nothing ever again i can tell you that much okay because once you know better you have to do better and that's just the truth through me being introduced to yoga she's now teaching me about crystals she's like oh this crystals can heal you this and this is about your chakras and your da 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 so now i'm really getting into chakras and i'm really getting into crystals and i'm like okay and she's like she gave me a crystal bible 
and she was like here like gifted it to me and so now she's like yeah you can go to a crystal shop and you can like um you know let the crystals speak to you they'll speak to you mind you this girl she used to go to the same church as me and she stopped going to the same church because of all the corruption and that pushed her away from jesus christ so now i'm feeling connected to her because we both left church for the same reason and we're both on this spiritual journey together so now I'm like in the crystal shops and I'm looking for crystals and I'm hovering my hand trying to see which crystal like you know calls out to me and I just wasn't connecting with the crystals like she was saying you know so um but I know that there are demons because I just I had an encounter with demon with a, with a demon and so I know that this that this spiritual warfare is real because of the encounters. And that's when I stopped listening to secular music because I was like the demon, the, the you know, the devil is the prince of the airwaves. So therefore, he is dominating the music industry and the, the music industry is dark and demonic. And so that's why I just like drifted away from secular music and started listening to more so affirmations, more so things where I'm worshiping myself. I'm praising myself. I'm tapping into my goddess energy. So now I'm creating this self-savior complex that is like, oh yeah, I, I have the power within me to change my world. I have the power to manifest what I want. I'm not doing anything in God's will. I'm chasing my own desires. I'm doing everything that I want to do. Now, I'm and throughout my relationship with my ex-husband, I'm having sex dreams. And now that I left, I realized that I was having his dreams, which is weird um, because he would always try to get me to have like talk about like having threesomes with these models that he would find. So that's what ultimately led to the demise of our relationship was because he would be sourcing these models using my business as a way to bait these models in like, oh, you want to work for City Republic? Oh, you want to work for Felicia? And mind you, I'm this big influencer so everyone is like trying to get a little piece of the light trying to get a little piece of you know and i'm so they're like yeah i want to work with her yeah i love your wife and and, da, 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 da. and then he would try to be in my ear about having like threesomes with these girls and that's what made me realize that he really has a fetish for young girls he would always shoot these girls naked and i remember pleading to him please stop shooting these girls naked like can you just shoot something else can you go more into fashion like why are you so obsessed with s and m and and shooting these girls in these ways like you're a whole married man this is his third marriage anyways so um the day I, i'm not going to get into how i ended up leaving him because you got you guys can watch that video what led me into um leaving him so i ended up leaving him i ended up getting divorced and now i'm excited because i'm like okay i really get to live my life freely i spent my whole entire 20s committed to this man now i get to commit to myself now i get to be with a black man because this man was was caucasian we gonna say what it is he looked caucasian everybody thought he was caucasian he was pretty much caucasian okay so now i'm like i'm gonna get me a big black d i want me a black man i'm never dating outside of my race again because i don't want to be a fetish i don't want to be what my dad was saying all men want from me is sex and i was literally married to someone that i was basically a sex slave to this person oh my gosh so now left him and i'm like oh i'm about to start crossing all of these things off of my bucket list all of these sexual desires that i want to do so i ended up sleeping with a woman again and um that that was and because the first time i had slept with a woman was when i was 20. so now i'm like 28 and i'm like doing it again and i liked it and I was just, but I never really saw myself like the type, like, I'm going to be in a relationship with a woman. I'm like, nah, 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 that's way too much emotion. That's too much estrogen. I can't be in a relationship with a woman. Like, I can't. Because I'm at this point kind of in my masculine, like, I'm making all this money. I'm pretty much independent. And I'm just like, being with a woman, like, it just was not in my cards. I was like, but I'll, I'll mess around with you, but 
that's just pretty much like where it ends so i had messed around with a girl we ended up we were friends she invited me into her house we were friends and um then i ended up moving into my own place she ended up dating a guy who was basically attracted to me because at this time like i like while this whole thing was going on like when i left my ex i decided to go on tinder and try to see if i can like find somebody to connect with so i'm talking to all these people i he was uh, one of the guys that i connected with i didn't remember him because we never made it past the chatting it was just like we talked and i never met him in person so he kept bringing me up to her and so she kind of knew that he was attracted to me and basically ended our friendship over him and that's how we stopped being friends and at this point like i'm dating the partner that i'm with now so i'm not even interested in being with your dude like i have my own dude like i'm good i'm happy with him and you're tripping okay yeah i'm in a different part of my room because i'm literally editing the video and realized that i missed out a large part of my testimony and i'm gonna tell you right now because I just I think it shows how God intervenes in our life when we think that we want things for us but then he literally steps in in a divine way to protect us so when I left my ex and I was out here trying to check things off my bucket list like saying like all the things that I wanted to do in regards to sex I'm like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that so let me tell you one thing I wanted to do so and it's about to rain so um one thing i was like okay i'm gonna have a one night stand i never had one before i'm gonna do it so it was miami carnival literally it was in october of 2019 was it 2019 yes and i was like um i'm gonna have sex i saw this guy that was in my band we was dancing we was having a good time i'm like okay we're gonna i'm gonna have my first one night stand um we went out to dinner he was talking to me about oh how he's in a polyamorous relationship it was the first time i ever met anybody in a poly relationship and he was looking for a third person and i'm like um no and then i saw his girlfriend and i was like eh, hell no she just looked like she just had like a botched surgery job all over her body like she just looked like everything felt like rocks on her i was like nah i'm good and then so i was like yeah we can go back to my place like and so we can get it going and like i was just so straightforward so then like we go back to my place and this man could not get hard and he was just like oh my god this has never happened to me before this is weird and i'm just sitting there waiting for it to get up and then he kept trying he was just like yo i i really don't understand what's going on i'm literally in the presence of a goddess and i don't know why i can't get up and so i'm just like yeah i don't know like i'm just like that's weird he started to cry and because he was so his pride like he was just like this has never happened it doesn't make sense why this is happening right so now i was like okay well you can go kind of like because i'm very blunt i'm very like you know i was like all right so you can dip that and i'm like damn like i really thought i was gonna get it in with this polyamorous man who probably had a whole bunch of sexual diseases inside of him and some soul ties that i was gonna create with the demons inside of him too lord Thank you for protecting me. Second time I tried to have a one night stand. We were, I was out of the club. I was in Austin. It was South by Southwest weekend or something like that. I don't remember. Um, so we're turning up. We're dancing. I see this guy looking at me from the corner of his eye, the room. And I'm just like dancing and seducing him and all that stuff, right? So then now I'm dancing. I'm seducing him. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then he was like, okay. I was like, meet me in the bathroom. So we go in the bathroom and we start making out and we had like this steamy ass makeout session. Like it was so intense. And then I was like, okay, well I have my friends, like let's meet up later on tonight. So we met up later on and we was getting, you know, groovy and everything and everything was about to happen. And this man slips it in, or at least he thinks he puts it in. This man slips it in the, between the, you know, the crack of your like booty hole. I hope there's no children listening to this video because it is explicit but so he's basically having sex with with nothing and i'm just laying there and then he comes in like two two three minutes and then i'm just sitting there like there was no penetration and he was done he was out and i'm just laying there like this is what i wasted my time and energy for i was like please call me an uber so that was like 
my second failed attempt at having a one night stand. And then I was just like, then in my mind, I literally said, you know what, God, I see what you're doing. I know you're trying to protect me. All right, I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to have no more one night stands. I'm going to just try to find me as someone that I can just have sex with consistently, but not be serious with them. That was my mindset. That goes to show that sometimes when you think that you want something and things are not working out the way that you plan to, sometimes it's because it just wasn't meant for you. And that's the reality of the situation. All right, now we can go back to the original video. And then in the midst of me doing that whole Tinder dating thing, I met this one other guy before I met the partner that I'm with now. And um, he was like heavily into astrology. And mind you, at this point, ast astrology is like the Bible to me. So I'm if I'm talking to somebody, the first thing I'm asking is, what's your sign? What what time were you born? I'm looking up your, your, your moon, your rising. Like I'm doing all of this. Like I'm literally judging everybody based off of their zodiac. I now heavily identify with my Zodiac being an Aquarius. So I'm like, I'm an Aquarius, you know, I'm a free spirit. I'm, you know, I'm giving goddess energy. You can go on my page. Everything was goddess, goddess, goddess. People would come up to me, call me a goddess. Like while, while I'm with my partner, people would be like, do you know that you're with a goddess? This is a goddess. Like, so I was really in a, in a way being worshiped. And, um, so now I attracted this partner that, he believes the partner that i'm with now he believes that he is a god he believes in this christ consciousness this new age belief christ consciousness that god is in me i am a god so therefore that makes me a god and which is really arrogant which is really self-righteous which is really demonic in a sense because if you're so busy praising yourself if you if the power is within you to control everything there's no room for God or Jesus Christ in your relationship. And so he was very much so a control freak. He's just very much, you know, kind of like controlling. And um, a lot of our arguments are basically like he just cannot be wrong. And that has to do with the God complex that he has. Like there's no way that he can be wrong. He'll do anything, say anything, even if that means hurting me, just so that he can preserve himself and, and not be wrong, right? So that's pretty much like our relationship was was kind of like toxic. Obviously, I wouldn't continue to be in a relationship with someone if I didn't think he was a good person. Like this man was loyal, which in my all my partners before were not loyal. Like that was the, the main thing for me that was so hard to find was a man just to simply choose me and be with me and be faithful to me. So he was very he's very loyal. And also he's very considerate. He's very observant. So like if he sees me, like he he would like see me making tea. Like that was my thing. I would always make tea. He would make the tea for me. He'll observe how I make it. He'll make it for me. Um, so and he was also like very knowledgeable. Like this man, he has like every single like all these Egyptian gods like tatted on him. All these pagan gods tatted on him. These Masonic symbols tatted on him. So like he really pride himself on being knowledgeable. So he was teaching me all about Egyptian culture where, and we had the same views on a lot of things because, you know, people would call us conspiracy theorists. Right. So I'm like, oh my God, this man is on my frequency. Like he, he's like, he's, he's like me, but the male version of me, you know? So I'm just like, man, like, I feel like really connected to this person. And like then like twin flames started popping up like over and over like that just kept like coming into my world. And then I was into angel numbers and it became a crutch because I was looking for them everywhere for confirmation. Because at this time, like, yo, when I say I was at the um, crystal shop, like I was I was more so into candles. So I would get the abundance candles, the protection candles, um, the like all of the cleansing candles i would burn them and i would say my affirmations while i'm burning them i'll place them on an altar like i I'd put them where they're supposed to have i at this point i had collected so many crystals and at this point i'm i'm wearing waist beads i had crystals all around me like I, it was just like i was like doing spiritual baths there was a point where me and my partner we had sex in the spiritual bath that i had made i had no idea that i was just doing so i was so deep in the demonic like I had no idea. And then at this point, like my partner, like he smokes three blunts a day. So now I'm getting weed for free. So now I'm smoking more than I've ever smoked. And he introduced me to psychedelics. So I'm I'm like 
doing i'm shrooming i'm 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 i am really out there and i'm so thankful that i never had a bad shroom trip like my shroom trips were pretty amazing like i would be really just like on my national geographic out in nature watching the trees breathe and just I, it was always like a really great experience for me um whenever i would um take shrooms so now that i'm with my twin flame and i'm learning about twin flame and i'm learning about shadow work which shadow work is you're really just inviting demons your shadow work is really to befriend and invite in your dark side to, to to sit with your dark side and my my twin flame was always mirroring my dark side and so i was always just like okay we're fighting because um it's something within me like he's mirroring something within me and so very early on in our relationship i was like look if we're going to continue this relationship we need to go into therapy because there was just so much darkness that was just like going on but then also i would get like glimpses of a great relationship and then also everyone would see us together and with you oh my gosh you guys are so compatible you guys are so beautiful you guys look so great together even though like secretly like our relationship was we were going through so much trauma um there was a point in our relationship where i felt like he was envious of my success because when he met me like i'm thriving you know i got my abundance candles burning i'm traveling the world i'm going to spain i'm going to morocco by myself i'm i went to two i've been to tulum seven times two of those times i flew him out i i'm like you know i i revamped his wardrobe like i'm on my sugar mama shit with him so little did i know that that was making him insecure until one time when we were drunk and we were you know about to engage in sex and he brings up the fact that he wants to make more money than me and, and because you know he wants to be able to provide and in my mind i'm just thinking you shouldn't want to make more money than me in order for you to take care of me like it's not a competition and then that kind of validated how i felt like he was competing against me in a way like he was somewhat envious of me and so that's why in our relationship has always been a power struggle. So when he, when we first started, when we first hooked up, it was during the pandemic. So that's what really escalated our relationship. And there were so, I don't want to, and I don't want to bring up the details of the things that I, I had to endure in that relationship because I'm obviously still with him. He's the father of my child. And I just don't want to paint him in a negative light um, because we all are battling demons. You know, we all are. So there were just, there were so many things about him that I broke up with him so many times because it just became so overwhelming and so dark and so stressful. And I was just like, I can't do this, but he will always come back and he will come back hard. Like he was very good at making up. He was very good at apologizing. But the thing was, whenever we would argue, I would see change. Like I would see, because we're, because we're doing therapy. So I would see very small changes in like different aspects of our relationship but never when it came to um the pride and the needing to prove a point and the mansplaining and the gaslighting and the like those things i'm like no shade i'm still dealing with it to this day um but him as a person in other ways was growing like he's you know trying to communicate better um but it just wasn't it you know we're we're learning and we're growing, right? So I, I, I have to give him the same grace that Jesus Christ gave me. So now um, I'm 29 years old and I tell him, I'm like, listen, like, I want a baby before I'm 30. So if that's not something you want to do, then, you know. So at this point, he's willing to do anything to be with me, to please me. So he's like, okay. Um, so now like in therapy, I'm learning about his past and stuff. So like we have a child and like the, the arguments did not stop. It was even more, it was just toxic. It was just very toxic. Like my pregnancy, the first half of my pregnancy, I was traveling. Like I was trying to stay away 
because it was just every other day was an argument every single thing turned into an argument with him and i just did not understand why it was always a constant fight like why he was always fighting with me it was always something and i'm just like i felt like i really had to walk on eggshells i couldn't say anything without it turning into a lecture and then it started to remind me of my father because my father was like that I couldn't say anything that opposed his point of view without it turning into a lecture or without it turning into an argument because, you know, he's his in his mind in my partner's mind. I am a God. So he carried that energy of arrogance, of pride, of stubbornness, of persistence. Um, and it was just like it just was so overwhelming for me that the first half of my pregnancy I traveled by myself. I would just leave. I would book an Airbnb or somewhere and I would just disappear to separate myself. And I'm just like praying that I'm like, dang, I really hope this changes. And then it was to a point where I couldn't travel no more because I got so big. I got so big that I would be a flight risk. It's like, girl, you look like you about to pop any day and I'm only six months. Like I was eating, girl. I was eating. I was 220 pounds by the end of my pregnancy, okay? So, so now I'm still like burning my candles. Now I have friends that are witches, okay? I have, I, I remember before I got pregnant, I had a friend that did a tarot card for me because I so wanted a baby. I wanted her to see like, am I gonna ever like have a child? She confirmed that I'll have a child, that I'll have a son. So that was the first time I ever dabbled into tarot cards. But then now I'm like, after I had my baby, I was like, oh, this is real. Like this, you know, and I'm thinking like these are all under the umbrella of God because she's not a bad person, you know, like she's a good witch. You know what I'm saying? Um, so now like I'm pregnant and I encounter this other girl who I used to go to high school with and we had a, she was super weird. She used to stalk me. She used to copy me and she was just a, she was a great below me. Anyway, so now like we're in our adult age and we reconnect and um. I had left the fertility clinic. This is when I was trying to get pregnant. And um, I had told her about it. And then I had told her, um, I was like, dang, I think I caught, at, sorry, I, th I think I caught the vid at the um, clinic or whatever. And she was just like, oh, you might be pregnant. And I'm just like, what does that have to do with me being pregnant? Like me being sick, what is that? She was just like, because when you're pregnant, your immune system shuts down. And, um, and because it's trying to supply the needs for your baby. And I'm just like, okay, girl. All right. So it turns out that I was pregnant. And so since she called it first, I called. She was one of the first people that I called to let her know that, hey, yeah, you was right. I'm pregnant. So she wanted to be my doula so, so, so bad. At this point, she had just lost a baby. She had lost the baby when it was like five or six months. It was a very graphic um dark like how she lost her baby was dark this girl was heavily into witchcraft heavily deep into witchcraft she was like a free spirit she she was into into some things okay and so i was like my conscience was like i need to keep her away from me and my baby because i don't know what she doing over there so um throughout the she lived in austin so throughout the pregnancy um you know me and my partner up and down fight here everything would be good and it was just like it was just like constantly there was no peace there was just no peace and then i would just feel so bad because i'm just like i'm trying to create a harmonious environment for my baby i'm trying to create peace and there's screaming and there's yelling and i'm screaming and i'm yelling and i'm and i'm just like you know i have all these hormones but i didn't have that masculine energy to balance it was just like I felt like I was arguing with a female. Like it was just like it was it, it was just constant. I was just like, damn, like I feel like I'm in a relationship with a woman. Like, why are we fighting so much over the dumbest stuff? Um, so now like my baby shower comes around and um I invite her to the baby shower. Before that, since I didn't want her to be my doula, I had asked her if she can teach my partner to be a doula so that he can assist me during birth. She was acting funny about that because she wanted to be my doula. Just a couple months ago, I found out she was lying to people, telling people that she was my doula. Anyways, so now my baby shower comes and my doula comes, who was a guy, and then my midwife comes and like she drove from Austin with no gift. 
out of dress code, super late. And I'm just looking at her like, why would you even bring your ass over here? Like for what? Then I'm entertaining my guests and I notice that she goes up into the bedroom and I'm like, why the fuck is she in my room? That's weird. So then I'm still entertaining my guests. I have people pulling me left and right. I have people rubbing on the belly and all this stuff like that. The whole time she was there, we did not talk to each other. We did not really interact with each other at all. So, so now like fast forward, I give birth to my child. Three days later, I get another spiritual attack. And this time it was, it was, it was a big one. Um, and I felt it on me. I could not breathe. I could not move. I could not scream. I could not do nothing. The only thing I could do was pray in my mind. And then instantly I felt the force release off of me because I said the Lord's prayer. Um, and that was the first time in a long time that I said the Lord's prayer, right? So I look over to my left. I see that baby is still sleeping peacefully. My partner is still sleeping peacefully. Then I try to put myself back to sleep because I had just given birth to a 10 pound baby. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? So then the next day, I'm like, what is that? What was that? Who said that to me? So now I'm like, who did that? Because that's crazy that after I announced my, that I had a baby that I get this encounter. So then now I've talked to my best friend and she's telling me, yo, this person keeps watching my story. Like she never watches my story. Like that's really weird. And I was just like, yo, I have a feeling that she's a person because mind you, she is into witchcraft. Mind you, this person had access to my home. She was in my room. So she knows the layout of my house. So I'm just like, I think it was her. And I'm just like, and then I said, I was like, God, if this is the person who did it, let me know. That same night, I got another attack, but this time I was wide awake. So I was laying down in my bed. Michael and Amon was downstairs sleeping and I was upstairs in the room laying down. I'm laying down. As I'm laying down, I'm looking at the door. The door is cracked. I'm about to fall asleep. I feel a gust of wind burst through the door on me and just started to suffocate me. And I could not breathe. Again, I'm feeling this same entity coming at me. And then again, I started saying the Lord's Prayer. So now I wake up and I'm burning sage. Not knowing what I'm doing. So I'm burning sage. And this is like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So now I'm like, all right. I went downstairs because I was so shook. And I slept on the couch with the, uh, my partner. So now I'm like, I know who did this. So then I sent her a text message. And I said, be careful where you send your intentions to. Because when you mess with me, just know that there's a whole army behind me. So you better be careful, whatever the case may be. Da, 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 da. Never, I did not have a spiritual attack again. Since I started, since I'm um, fast forward, I'm seeking deliverance, but we'll get to that. So now, so now I'm like, okay, <laughs> demons are real. I know that God is real, but I'm still not acknowledging Jesus Christ. Okay. Because at this time I've learned um, so much about the Anunnaki, about the Ple Pleiades and about star seeds and about light workers and about all of these, all of these different truths. Okay, that was meant to lead you astray from the truth, um, which is Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, and he died for us on our cross and rose again. I stopped believing in that because, again, like I had a partner who did not believe, does not believe in the Bible. He does not believe in Jesus Christ. He believes in Christ consciousness. He believes that God is within us. He believes that we are God. And that's no different than us worshiping false idols. Okay. Because if we're worshiping ourselves and our, our true selves are sinners, we're basically worshiping the demons within us, right? But I didn't know that. I'm thinking I'm being unapologetically myself and I'm da 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 And then not to mention our relationship started off lustfully because I had just got a divorce. I was not trying to get into another committed relationship because I was just locked down. I'm like, I need to be free. And so we started off like, okay, we're just going to be you know, F buddies, we're just going to mess around. And he was just like, okay, you say that now. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Jokes on me because we have a baby together now. But he was like, yeah, okay, you say that now. But that's the, that goes to show how the foundation of our relationship 
is faulty because it started off based off of sexual perversion. It was based off of sin, you know, based off of fornication. So it makes sense why throughout our whole relationship, we have just been fighting each other because it's our demons fighting each other. Like there's no God in our relationship because this man thinks he's a God and I think I'm a goddess. Okay. So <laughs> praise God for his grace and his mercy. Um, so now like I have a baby and I want to focus on motherhood, but I'm still working, but I don't want to work. I want to focus on being a mom. But then also my relationship is draining me because we're fighting all the time. We're arguing all the time. And then I'm trying to raise a baby. And then it's just like, I can't focus on work. I can't really focus on anything. Um, and meanwhile, while I'm, my business is shriveling up, he's thriving, you know, like everything with him is going well. He's, he's making the most money he's ever made in his whole entire life since we started dating. And you can ask him this. Never in his life has he consistently got a check and made as much money as he did until he started dating me. Um, but at the time, I was happy because I'm like, hey, I really don't want to work anyway. So that's great. Like, great for you. Even though a part of me feels like, yo, you're kind of sucking me dry, like low key. Um, so anyways, we have, we have our baby and um our lease was up at our last place and um we were struggling to find a place so we ended up moving into our people's house and then a whole nother level of darkness happened because now i'm back home with my mother never really had a good relationship with her our relationship got better when i moved out i feel like that's the case for a lot of people <laughs> but our relationship got better when i moved out so now that i'm back in her home with my own child dealing with childhood drama on top of dealing with relationship trauma it was just a lot it was just a lot to deal with i fell into a depression my car got stolen um i basically have no money i'm i'm struggling to make ends meet i'm struggling to pay my bills i have never ever been in a financial situation in my life where i had to worry about money and now i am with a child i was just so overwhelmed right so I'm just like, thank you, God, because I needed to get, I, I needed to lose everything so that I can find him, right? So now this started my journey to getting back close to God. And so now I'm praying more, but I'm not praying to Jesus. You know, I'm praying to God. I'm praying to this version of God that I have now created in my head, this new age version of God that I've created into my head, right? And so, um, things are still not going well. Our relationship is getting worse. And now I'm considering being a single mom. I'm cons I'm considering moving into a place by my own, by just me and mom. And at this point I had broke up with my partner again, because it, it was just so overwhelming. Like I had never been in such a toxic relationship in my life. Like before all my other relationships, they, they, they were very, good at hiding their demons so i didn't we didn't really argue that much it was more so the infidelity so it was like the moment i found out that they were cheating on me i left and that was that but throughout the relationship before i was with him i was with my ex-husband who was older so he was very good at communicating so we had a very good way of sitting down and talking out our issues me and my ex-husband but now i'm with somebody who doesn't know how to do that who doesn't have emotional intelligence. I don't want to say that, but that's what it is. It's having emotional intelligence, being responsible with your emotions. I, I was not with somebody who would just like flip the script, lose his mind, start screaming, start yelling, start talking loud and start all of this stuff. And I was just like, yo, I'm, I'm not used to this shit. I've never been with somebody like this, but I just chalked it up to, oh, he's a Scorpio. That's how they are. And then on top of that, I'm like, he's an artist. That's how they are. They're creative. They're passionate. That's just, you know, they, they, and a, and a lot of artists, whether you believe it or not, it's your creative side. So you're operating more so in your feminine. That's why every time we would argue, I felt like I was arguing with a woman because he, ne he never would calm me down. He would just like, I go loud, he gets louder. Never know. Like 
I never trusted him to lead because of that. I never, I, I couldn't trust him to lead because it was just like, you don't even know how to navigate arguments. You don't even know how to defuse me. I'm the woman looking for you to lead and you're, you're, you're just as bad as I am. You're, you're just as whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so now like he's saying like the reason why things are so bad is because, you know, we back here and we're not seeing each other because I'm living with my mom. He's living with his mom. That's like five minutes down the street. We're not sleeping in the same house. So it was giving like co-parenting. So that's why he was like, that's why like we're not doing good is because we're, we're not in the same household. And in my mind, I'm just like, you know, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. It does make sense. It's easy to push things under the rug if we're not staying, if we're not talking things out because we're not together. Like that makes sense, right? And then at this point, I had decided to stop having sex with him because I was like, let's stop having sex so we can focus on the things that we need to work on. And that actually started working for a while, right? So I was like, we're not going to have sex until the new year. So that, I think that was like maybe five or six months we didn't have sex. So now since we're struggling to find a place, I had actually started this Airbnb that I'm in right now. And um, it was doing well, but because we couldn't find a place and I was so desperate to leave, I was like, let's just move into this Airbnb, right? So now we move into this Airbnb in October of last year. And um, so we're here and um, we're starting to kind of like find our bearings, trying to get some type of um, routine back and everything like that. Now that I'm like abstaining from sex, I'm not really having sex. And um, now we start having sex again for the New Year's. And then I feel like, again, like this energy is like coming back, like we're arguing or all this stuff like that. Now I'm starting to seek God. Now I'm listening to gospel music. Now I'm now I'm like really trying to like wake up in the morning and pray and and cuz I'm just so tired of this toxic cycle and then I'm trying and I'm tired of like arguing in front of our son. That was the reason why I broke up with him because I would always be the one to have to diffuse the arguments. I would always have to be the one to be like, "Hey, I do not want to argue in front of him. This is triggering me. This is reminding me of my childhood when my parents used to argue in front of me. I do not like it because I'm trying to break generational curses. I don't want to do this. But his pride and his ego, like, he just did not care. Like, he would still argue. And, and, and there was this, I started becoming more submissive because now at this point, like, he's taking care of the bills. He's paying for things. And I'm relying on him to take care of things. So now in these arguments, I'm the one who's like more so stepping back from arguments and, you know, biting my tongue and walking over eggshells and like avoiding certain topics so that he wouldn't lose his shit. And um, so that was pretty much like how it was going. And I noticed that our arguments was getting less and less because I'm the one changing. I'm the one taking the initiative to be responsible with my emotions, aka have emotional intelligence, but he's not. You know what I'm saying? So the moment I speak up and voice my opinion is now we're arguing. You know what I'm saying? So as long as I'm not voicing my opinions or having a different opinion, everything is great. Everything is peaceful, right? So now um, I'm continuing on my journey, praying in the mornings, listening to my gospel. Then this, um, I start this, this testimony of um, ex witch um, turns to Jesus. So now I'm learning about African spirituality and all these witches and all of these warlocks that turn to Jesus Christ. So now it's no longer just this umbrella of God. Now it's Jesus Christ. And I hadn't talked about Jesus Christ since I used to go to church when I was 20. Mind you, I'm, I'm 32 now. So now I'm like, okay, these people are turning to Jesus Christ. When I said I became obsessed for a month straight, I'm just watching hundreds of hours of people getting delivered, people turning their life over to Christ. And I'm just like, my heart is racing. And I'm just like, like I'm feeling this calling. I'm feeling this pull to like come back to Jesus Christ. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Now, because I'm starting to go back to Jesus, now I'm starting to get these spiritual attacks at night. And I'm just like, okay. This Jesus must be real because these demons are mad. They're upset. So now as I'm watching all these videos, I see from new age to Jesus. 
And I'm like, new age? What's new age? What is that? Child, when I say my heart dropped, it was every single thing I was doing. The crystals, the, the manifesting, all of these things I was, uh, I was so heavy in. I was like, oh my God, I was practicing witchcraft this whole time and I had no clue that I was doing this. So now my heart is on fire for Jesus Christ. I am praying in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. I'm rebuking everything. And now I'm understanding that, okay, so now that I'm in a spiritual warfare, I'm learning about incubus, succubus, the spirit of perversion, this monitoring spirits. When I learned about monitoring spirits, I did a prayer for monitoring spirits and I started losing so many followers off of my Instagram like crazy. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is so deep, right? Like this is crazy. Like this, oh, this is real. i like, this is real. Jesus is real. Like I was like, oh my gosh. Then I was convicted to do, um, I was convicted to do a fast. So I did a fast for five days. At the end of my fast, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, praise Jesus. And I was just like crying profusely, profusely crying. I was just like, I just thank you God so much for your grace and your mercy. And then I had to pray for, I had to pray for deliverance because I had sacrificed two children, two babies to Moloch. So now I'm, I'm, I'm being introduced to Tiffany and she's talking about breaking generational curses and breaking covenants. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I'm getting goosebumps right now as I'm talking to you. And I'm just like, I just thank you. I just can't see. I just say thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. I just keep saying that because I'm just like, I was really out here thinking I was living my best life, thinking that I was really just a goddess. Uh, I was really, I was just really lost in this world, but through it all, Jesus Christ kept me. Jesus Christ kept protecting me and kept covering me. And through it all, he still blessed me with my own baby, even though I know I am not worthy. He gave me a child to raise in his name and only through Jesus. I'm just so thankful. I'm just so grateful. So after my fast, I had to pray for, I, um, I was convicted and it was like, oh, you said, um, the Holy Spirit was like, you need deliverance. Mind you, I'm, I'm not in a church home. So I'm just getting all these information from off of YouTube University, right? So then I find a deliverance prayer. I started doing deliverance prayer. I'm starting to get hot. I'm starting to get overwhelmed. And then I have to stop because I'm like, okay, it's just me and my son here. I don't know what is going to happen. So let me be safe. Let me stop. I don't want to do anything. And then like a demon come out of me and goes into my child or whatever. So I'm just like, let me not do it. So I stopped it. So then I got in my car and I was on my way to his play date. Um, and I started listening to Maverick City because Maverick City popped up. I was like, oh my God. And, I, and then I'm listening to them and I'm crying. It's the Holy Spirit is just like filling me up. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm ridding myself of these demons, but I now have to... I'm an empty vessel. So now I have to fill myself up with the Holy Spirit. I have to fill myself up with his word or else, like they said, the demons is going to come back. They're going to bring more. Right. So anyways, I'm in my car and I'm, I'm crying profusely, living, listening to Maverick. And I'm, and I'm just like, now my stomach started rumbling and I'm starting to feel nauseous and I'm starting to feel like I need to throw up. So I'm feeling queasy. I'm like, why is this? I was like, this is weird. And I was like, well, I just finished fasting, but I never felt like this when I was fasting. So I kind of made myself kind of throw up and I kind of burped up some spit. And I was just kind of like, that was weird. Um, then after I came back after the play day and I found out part of the deliverance is you might feel like you need to throw up because these are demons leaving your body. And I'm like, whoo, Lord. <laughs> I was just like, this is crazy. This is crazy. So then now, um, the next day, my, this is leading all the way up until last week. This is very recent. Um, my partner and I, we get into an argument, right? And, um, I'm in the bathroom cause I'm getting, I'm about to do like some hair tutorials cause I sell weight. So I'm getting ready to do like a hair tutorial and he's talking to Amon and Amon is like doing something. And he's like, oh, well, Amon, you're, you're so persistent. He was like, you're going to be very successful in life because you're so persistent, right? And then I said, well, being persistent can be a double-edged sword. And he was like, well, how so? And I'm just like, because you can be persistent in something that's not good for you. Um, and also you can be persistent 
to a way that it can be a turn off for people. So and, 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 you, and you can become arrogant in your persistence and you can become stubborn in your persistence. And then his response was, oh, well, it's worked for me so far. And I'm just like, has it? And then he was just like, oh, well, I got you. And I got the fam that I want. And I was like, for now. And he was just like, well, I manifested this. I, I manifested this. So it is what it is or something like that. And I'm just like, I was like, no, it's in God's will. And then he started saying something. And I'm just like, you know what, God, I understand that this is a demon that I'm talking to that I'm going back and forth with. And so I went into the bathroom and I started again, praying in the name of Jesus, thanking God in the name of Jesus, asking for deliverance in the name of Jesus, praying for my partner in the name of Jesus, that he can just, you know, just come to him and get salvation and, and, and just believe in Jesus Christ because he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe Jesus is real. He believes in Haru and he believes in these, all these Egyptian gods, but he doesn't believe in the Bible because he believes that the Bible has been, you know, tainted by man and all this stuff. And so like he, he believes he's a God. He believes in Christ consciousness. He believes that God is in him and I will continue to give him grace because that used to be me. I'm going to continue to pray for him and pray because what, what else can I do? So I asked God, I was like, what can I do to end this toxic cycle, God? I was like, I surrender to you. I no longer want this toxic cycle. What do I need to do? And he responded. And he said, abstain. I was like, oh, Lord, abstain. I was like, how am I supposed to do that? Like, I, I, what's the point of doing that? I already have my child out of fornication. I'm living with this man. It was a Scorpio. I'm just kidding. But I'm just like, how, what, what is the point of abstaining? And then it made so much sense to me because as long if, if I continue to give myself to this person who is filled with these demons, even though he doesn't, he's unknowingly not, he doesn't know this. I'm now going to let these demons into me after I'm now cleansing myself of these demons and giving my, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, aha, abstain. Got it. Good. Done. <laughs> you don't got to tell me nothing else. I, I'm not going to question you. That's what you said. I asked. This is why you got to be careful what you asked for. You, I asked. You told me. I said, okay, it is what it is. I, I'm, I'm abstaining now. Now, now I'm abstaining from sex where I was introduced to sex basically by, at, the age of, at the age of five. Not, yeah, basically when I was molested all the way up until now, 32, I'm abstaining I'm, I'm now on my modesty journey, changing my life and giving it to Christ. And I've never felt more alive. I've never felt more on fire for Jesus and, and, and breaking those covenants that I made with Moloch from those abortions that I did. I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your grace. I pray that anybody that is watching this, that is in the situation where they're considering aborting this child, I just pray that, Lord, that you cover them and you and you just put your hands on them and you give them peace. And then you and they know that they can find solace in you, that they can get through this. Even if even if you can't, you can have an adoption for that child. If you are not in a financial situation, there are thousands of people that are ready to adopt that child. So I just please, please, if, if you're in that situation of thinking about getting an abortion, Please do not. The whole the whole foundation of Planned Parenthood is deeply rooted in demonic practices. It's deeply rooted in eugenics. It was meant to target the black community to eradicate us. So the whole foundation of Planned Parenthood, it is meant to worship the devil. That's why this, this there's this whole movement of, of this feminist movement trying to be like, oh, your body, your choice, not even knowing that you're creating a covenant with a demon named Moloch. So if you want more information on that, I highly recommend you to go look into Tiffany and, and she can help you if you believe um, and how to break those covenant if you were a person who's had an abortion as well. Um, but yes, um, here I am today. I'm, I'm just so thankful and I'm glad that you guys sat through this long testimony because it is long. But again, this is my this is my life story. I'm 32 years old. So a lot and i'm just glad that i found my way back um we're in a time where there's a there's a huge mass spiritual awakening and i feel like a lot of people are seeing the evils of this world and and seeing satan run amok you know like he he's really 
out here in these streets. He really is like all in the industry, the music industry, in Hollywood. You're seeing all of these things coming out with P. Diddy and all the things he used to do and all of these, like everything is deeply rooted in pedophilia and just the pervert, the, the sexual perversion. Um, and, and just, ugh, it's just so, it's just so dark, but you know what? There is light in all of this. And I'm just so glad that I, I'm on the right side of these things. And I'm so glad that I, through me, I can now teach my son about God and about Jesus Christ. And, um, and I, and I definitely feel, feel like there's a lot of trauma was passed down in the womb while I was pregnant with him since I was, I was just living in so much, um, chaos. And I know a lot of you guys are probably just like looking at me like, why are you, you know, I'm still with this person and I'm just like, I just, I used, that's where I was. All of these things are new to me, you know, as well. And, and I have to trust the process. I have to trust the journey and I have to pray. I have to pray for deliverance for him. I have to pray for his salvation. And I just pray that he does come to Jesus because I know ultimately I want a man of God. I want to be loved the way the Bible teaches love. And I know that ultimately, if my partner cannot give that to me, then then that's just going to be the end of that. And um, But I pray that that is not the case. I pray that he comes to God, not because he... And you know what? In a way, I don't even... I wouldn't even be mad if he finds Jesus because of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't, I just don't want it to be like a manipulative situation where like you pretend to do this so that you can be with that person like because that's all going to come to light anyways you know um because god knows your heart so thank you <laughs> thank you so much um for listening to my testimony um there's going to be a lot of changes and um i know that god will restore everything that i have lost in jesus name and yeah that's it i love you Bye.